Hey guys and welcome back to Fenrir and welcome back to the Fenrir Rescue Diaries. We're back at one of the rescue shelters that I volunteer my time at and today we have an absolutely beautiful and fascinating case that I can't wait to kind of tell you the story about. So unfortunately this girl was found abandoned. We're at the shelter where they deal with a lot of the abandoned and police cases. So uh, they were called out to pick her up and she's come. Before she can go through the kind of rescue um, process, they have to do a quick vet trip um, and then spay them if necessary, see if there's any health issues to be concerned about. And just as they were about to spay her, the vets noticed a bit of a problem around the bladder area and thought that she might have some bladder stones and that she'd need an operation before they could spay her. And I've just turned up and this, you won't, you, honestly, you'll think I'm lying to you. You won't believe this is honestly what came out of her bladder in that operation. Now, I didn't believe it at first when the guys at the rescue centre showed me, but look at the size of some of those. All of that, I'm not, all of that, every single one of those was in her bladder that she was having to carry around with her, bless her. Um, showing no signs of pain, no signs of discomfort. She was an old girl, but they were all, all in there, so yeah. Super pumped that they managed to get those out. Um, they were able to do the operation, no problem. And, um, and she's here back with me now to do a temperament assessment. We're gonna go through that process, show you us, uh, show you the kind of things I do as part of a temperament selection when I'm volunteering at these rescue centers and um, get her ready to find her forever home. So first things first, what I like to do is um, I dive more definitely into like the temperament side of things as opposed to the training side of things. So what I like to do is first of all, as with anything, I assess kind of leadership relationship and engagement and she's kind of doing her own thing having a sniff but that's okay um what i like to do is see if i can get oh yes good kill oh yes so straight away absolutely beautiful so i've done literally i've just picked this lead up and started filming oh yes good kill this makes my it warms my heart that already wagging tail she's keen to engage with me and she's going off and doing her own thing afterwards but that's not a problem whatsoever. So in terms of engagement, we're in a superb spot. Um, that's excellent. Then the big things that I want to look at are around, do we have any aggression concerns? Because that's the most likely thing that will cause a dog to get put down quickly in a shelter. That'll come from two places. First of all, aggression with a handler, with myself, but just simply going and getting her out of her kennel getting a lead on her has addressed that now what i like to do and we've got a couple of dogs over here and our mate barney over here is we start to barney barney oh hello oh good boy so straight away we're going to just start to assess how she does when there's other dogs around now i know barney's not overly food driven but i do know that my mate barney here i've worked with him on a few occasions He's a good old boy and he's excellent with other dogs, but straight away, again, wonderful. So in terms of what breed she is, she, there's definitely Labrador in there, but what else she's kind of mixed with, we, um, we don't know. It's anybody's guess. I'd be fascinated to hear your guys' opinion on what you think she's mixed with. Um, the colourings are fascinating. She's got some lovely tan down her legs. Um, the, her fur is definitely slightly different from a Labrador, but yeah, that's a... Uh, a topic for another conversation. So straight away, kind of around reactivity towards other dogs, no. Reactivity towards a handler, no. Then what I want to do is assess any resource garden. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's a good girl. Oh, good girl. You're bringing it back? You're going to let me go near it? Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so she's definitely an older lady. This is interesting. So this time she hasn't brought it back to me, but now let's assess. So she's clearly claiming it. Now at this point, this is where finesse comes in. I'm assessing body language. I'm looking at her ears. I'm looking at her general demeanor. I don't have any concerns here. If her chest was starting to come up and over it, I'd be concerned. If her ears started to come forward, I'd be concerned. If she was side eyeing me, like this, rather than happy-go-lucky, just kind of looking up to me, I'd be concerned. With any new dog that I've never worked with before, and straight away she moves away from it anyway. If she was to remain in that position, I'd slowly start to come with my foot and just put it near. Usually that's enough to trigger any resource guarding-based responses and that would tell me whether we have an issue. And what I want to do is, because I talked through that one, I want to show that process a bit quicker. So if I can get the same kind of response from her, Thank you. 
The hearing's definitely not brilliant. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Right, now I want to come and make an attempt to take this off her. Claim it. Beautiful, yes. That was an absolutely lovely moment. So I made a very clear claim for that using kind of non-verbal and then I'll reward her for giving it up to me. But I used a very non-verbal approach using body language to claim it. Let's see if we can get a similar response. So I'm claiming the toy. Yes, good. Yes. It had to go through her mind a little bit and then she made the conscious decision to back away and let me take that toy. And then again, I'm going to reward her for doing so. So in terms of resource guarding and a level of respect, that is absolutely superb. Now, she's not bringing it back to me, which I understand. She wants to play with it. And again, let's see if we can do one more nice, calm, assertive body language. Yes, good. Good girl. She lets me take it, no resource guarding, and then she can have it back. In terms of when I work with rescue dogs, that for me, I can breathe a sigh of relief now. If she was to guard that resource guard, it grumble, snap, well, now we've got a huge issue on our hands and I have to fix that very quickly because you're just not going to rehome a dog with resource guarding um, just from a liability perspective. It's a really difficult decision. Now what I want to do is do the same thing with a little bit of a treat. Yes. Any food drive there, girl? Oh, you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. Just a lovely, what a lovely girl. Just a lovely girl. It breaks my heart that she was carrying all that round in the bladder with her. I think that's why I'm... I'm so keen about her and so fond. Oh, you sh Oh, if you are a collie, this makes sense. Oh yeah, her eyes. She's definitely got eye issues. I did wonder. Yeah, look. Oh, she like loses track out. Yeah, so she's an old girl. We don't know how old she is, but she's definitely in her senior years. But again, even this, she's being very respectful. So I'm putting my hand right there by her teeth. She's showing beautiful bite inhibition to make sure that she's not biting down on my hand. I don't mind playing a bit of tug with you. I just want to watch those old lady teeth. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. But she's still got her teeth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, plenty of teeth. Again, this is a good, this isn't something I would ever recommend and someone that's not experienced do themselves. But that's my microphone, mate. So we pop that back in my pocket. But again, to be able to come in and kind of check her ears, look at her teeth, Again, all these are just, it's just a wonderful um, example of kind of a calm, happy-go-lucky, relaxed, passive demeanour and temperament. And yeah, the difficulty for her will be her age and people want a younger dog, they want puppies. Um, if I had more time and more space, you could come and live on with us in a heartbeat, little girl, you're lovely. So then guys, there we go. That is how I do a temperament assessment on one of the rescue dogs that I work with when I'm volunteering here at the shelters. It's one of the highlights of my week. I still absolutely love doing these, especially when I get to come across cases like this glorious lab cross here. We're gonna go and get some dogs out that I know are involved in police cases that are extreme reactivity. There's some bite cases, so they're the more dramatic ones. But it is really nice when you find a case like this where it's a sad case because she got abandoned but she's a wonderful dog and just needs somebody to give her a lovely home, don't you, girl? So in the next video with her, we're going to be assessing kind of her communication and the obedient stuff, see what she knows, see if there's anything we can quickly teach her and just better prepare her and the new owners that are going to give her a forever home because she's a wonderful dog and she'll make somebody very happy.